Hey, welcome to Broke With Audio Foul Taste. Uh, today I'm going to do my long overdue um, VC introduction video. Um, I just want to address the questions, uh, why do I collect records and um, why do I make videos? And, um, and uh, tell you a little bit about who I am. So, um, for whatever reason, I haven't been comfortable saying my name on this, but I'm going to say my name now. It's Ian. My name's Ian and I live in rural northeast Iowa. And um, um, and I collect records. <laughs> and uh, sounds like an AA video or something. Anyway, so why do I collect records? For me, it's all about the analog. Uh, if you've seen any of my videos, uh, you hear me kind of go on and on about that. That um, I, I you know I strive to get editions that are cut from analog tape, and um, and that I'm and that I'm occasionally frustrated uh, when you can't get those. Um, but, uh, but for the most part, I've been able to find a lot of great stuff. Uh, and that's, that's reason number one is that for me, it's all about getting closest that whatever sounds closest to that original source material is what I want. And so when you cut directly from that source material, that's what sounds best. That's my, that's my general philosophy towards records. It's not, um, you know, and, and there's, there's stuff that gets transferred to digital that can sound amazing. I've got some of that stuff. Uh, I'm pretty happy with it, uh, but when I'm aware that there's tapes out there that could be cut from, that frustrates me. Um, at the same time, uh, what am I trying to say here? Yeah, I just that's that's just what I that's the, that's what records that's records at their best for me. That's what they do is is they they come closest to the to the original source. Um, I'm not someone who cares a lot about uh, covers and uh, posters and all these little sort of extras and, and doohickeys um, and different strokes for different folks, right? Like I'm just not into the sort of like artifact itself necessarily all that much. I just want it to sound good. I want it to sound great. I want it to sound the best it can possibly sound. Um, that's, why, that's why I go for records and uh, so that's, the, that's what I talk about in my videos is like here are mastering engineers that do it right. Here are record labels that do it right. Uh, here are some releases where they did it right. Here are some other releases where I'm disappointed and I wish they could have done it this way instead of that way. That's the kind of stuff I like to talk about. That's the kind of stuff I think about as I'm collecting records. So I, I talk about those things. Um, so uh, I was born in 1976. I'm old enough to, experience, to have experienced records um, originally when I was a kid. Uh, and then my parents uh, switched over to CD around 1987 or so when the Beatles came out on CD. And uh, so then uh, it was nothing but CDs for me um, all through you know, junior high and high school. And then uh, in 1996 or so I moved to Iowa City and there were record stores there. And uh, so there was Record Collector, there was BJ's Records, there was Real Records. And I um, started buying records again and realized that, uh, that for the most part, they sound way better than CDs. Um, and uh, so that's when I started my original sort of real record collection and collected for nine years back then from, from 06 to, to 2005. Uh, and then I sold that record collection of something like 600 records uh, in 2005. I sold them at, at Logos in Santa Cruz when I went back to college. And I regret it. And uh, I sold them for a song uh, and um, and you know, if I'd sell that same record collection today, it'd probably be an order of magnitude or two um, uh, more valuable. But oh well, uh, I've fortunately been able to replace almost all those records. Uh, in many cases, getting much better versions than I had back then. Uh, so that's been kind of the the cool thing about it, uh, about starting over in that. Um, but uh, the thing that got me back into it was. Um, well, one, missing records. Like, I was sort of lost there for about nine years as I tried to figure out, okay, how do I even buy music now? Um, was never status, was never happy with, like, buying files that you download. Was never happy really with streaming. Um, so, yeah, just was, was missing records in general. Uh, and then the Beatles and Mono came out. And I thought, you just buy this. You don't think about it. You just buy it. So I bought it in 2014. Didn't have a hi-fi yet. And it just uh, sat at my parents' house for, for about three years until I finally got a hi-fi and then started collecting again in earnest. 
Uh, and so now I'm, I'm back up. I think I have a little bit more now than I had at my peak back then. I got 600, 650 or so records now. And um, so that's, that's my history of, of record collecting. Uh, why do I make videos? Well, um, I'm not a super active member of the VC. I, I've, it's only in the last year that I've even been watching any videos at all. Uh, I just I got an elliptical. I started uh, exercising on the elliptical, wanted something to look at and distract me while I'm on the elliptical, and started noticing VC videos. Um, in particular, the, the people whose videos I watched all the time were 45 RPM audiophile and Mike at the Ingroove. And uh, so I liked 45 RPM audiophile because he's coming at it from the same point of view as I am in terms of wanting just the best possible sound quality and seeing all analog as being the best possible sound quality. Um, but there's plenty of differences be between me and him. I'm not buying five different editions of the same record. I'm not spending hundreds of dollars on, on records. I'm, I'm much more picky and choosy. We also have different uh, tastes in music. That's, that's all fine. That's not a criticism of him or anything. I'm just saying that's where we differ. Um, and, then, um, and then Mike at the Ingroove, I, just, I, I love the new release videos. He just talks, they're just real simple, nothing to them. He just talks about uh, what's new this week and I just really enjoy that it's kind of I, I live uh, in a rural area almost never make it to record stores and that kind of like replaces that for me it replaces like going through the new arrivals um, so it wasn't until I started making my own videos that I started uh, seeing other people and meeting other people uh, and knowing and, and learning that there's actually tons of people who were doing this uh, so it's been really cool uh, meeting a lot of you so far in the comments and whatnot uh, people have been really uh, welcoming uh, and uh, I really appreciate that. And so I'm gonna, the plan is to keep making videos as long as I have ideas and as long as it stays fun. Um, you know, my, my biggest fear about this is that people are gonna start getting petty in the comments, uh, that, it's just, that it's just gonna get too annoying dealing with feedback, but I've been pleasantly surprised with how, with how positive, and not that everyone has to be all positive all the time, and not that I'm, not that I shouldn't be criticized. That's that's all well and good. I, I, this pettiness really just like makes me just kind of get sick of it real quick. So, so I hope things just uh, keep on going the way the way they're going. And um, and I've just been just been really pleased with how it's gone so far. It's been really fun. So as long as it's fun, as long as I have ideas, I'm gonna keep making videos. Um, okay, so let me just uh, show you my gear, and that'll be all there is to it. It's it's it's. I warn you, it is nothing special. Um, it's, uh, you know, I've got, I've got the word audiophile in my name. I was kind of reluctant to do that because I'm not an audiophile in the sense of just like, I'm just going to throw money at it no matter what. You know, I'm definitely a believer in like, <clears throat> get, stuff, get stuff sounding as good as possible within reason. And I don't have a huge budget for this stuff. And uh, so, you know, I'm not going to spend huge amounts of money for, for some minimal marginal benefit. All right. So would I like better than the one I have? Of course I would. Everyone does, right? Um, and you know, perhaps someday I will upgrade this and that, but I got to say, I'm pretty happy with what I have so far. Uh, great sounding records sound great on this system. Could they sound even better in a better system? Of course. But what I got, I'm really happy with while acknowledging that it's not amazing or anything. Uh, Audio Technica ATLP 120 USB. That's my turntable. Uh, the only upgrade I've made on this is the cartridge. I don't know if this is able to see your focus, but it's the uh, Audio-Technica VMN40ML. Um, really happy with that cartridge. Um, almost no inner groove distortion. Um, things sound great on it. Oh yeah, uh, I should mention, I've got a leather, uh, what are those things called? Platter thing? I don't know what those things are called off, off the top of my head, but it's leather. And uh, I, I do feel like that makes a difference in the sound. Like uh, when I started using it, I thought this thing seemed to sound better. So um, I like that. Uh, and it's easy to clean. Um, receiver, also nothing special. This the receiver and the speakers I got from my dad when he, um, he upgraded his system, gave me his old stuff. Uh, it's a Pioneer uh, VSX74TXVI. I don't know any more about it than that. And I got his uh, acoustic research speakers, which uh, I don't even know. I couldn't tell you what they even are. Acoustic research model number 
M6HI head unit. I don't even know what these are. Holographic imaging. Okay, right on. <clears throat> okay, so that's what I got. It's uh, pretty simple. Um, anyway, I don't really know what, what else to say about it than that. Uh, other than to say that, like, you got great sounding records. You got decent gear. Things are going to sound awesome. And uh, I know they can get better. I'd like it to be better. But I'm also super happy with where I'm at with it. Um, okay, I'm going to leave it at that. Thanks so much. Uh, see you in my next video.